Um, looking forward to the game tomorrow against Hearts. It'll mm-hmm. be the first time that we'll be using VAR in Scottish football. What do you and the, the, the rest of the players anticipate it'll be like? Um, for me, I'm for VAR. Um, I think it's a good thing for the game, you know, it makes the game more clear. But uh, it's still also a little bit of 50-50 still because there's still some moments where you know, things are a bit unsure, but I think, uh, you know, we need to give it some time, but it will be a good benefit for the game. We saw during the summer um, the training session that was held at Celtic Park and how the, the training sessions themselves are very high tempo, but sometimes VAR can uh, disrupt that tempo. Is that something that the manager has, has helped you to prepare for in training sessions or are you just trying to keep that momentum up whenever the game restarts? No, we will, uh, you know, we will continue to play our game like always, you know, we want to play very quick, we want to have quicker restarts. Um, regarding with the VAR, I don't know what the situation will be like, but um, like I said, we don't know what's going to happen yet, but we're just going to continue the way we play, which is, we want to play quick. Hi, Moritz. Um, you've obviously played in some games in Europe that's had VAR and domestically we've not got it yet until this weekend. Is there anything that you need to consider when you're out on the pitch differently when VAR is in play? Um, not really. Do you still play the same um, as before, you know. Um, like I said, it makes the game only a bit more clear for, you know, for little tight moments, you know, when you maybe attack and let's say the attacker is in the box and gets a little touch and you're not sure if it's a penalty or not, then it will get checked and it's it's good. It's a good benefit, which makes it clear, which makes a uh, it less of an issue, you know, um, for afterwards the game because normally we don't know the answer if there's a, you know, if there's a um, foul or not, not a foul. Um, so yeah, we make things more clear. And what type of game are you expecting tomorrow at Tyne Castle? Um, it would be a tough game. Um, we know uh, the atmosphere is very, very tough. They will be physical. We also know they have a, a little bad spell, but uh, we're prepared for the fight tomorrow and we play the way we play like always. Well, so how pleased were you to get a, a clean sheet the other night? Because it had been a, a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, very, very pleased. Oh, you still continue with your question? or? Um, no, I'm uh, very pleased. Uh, you know, we as defenders are very pleased for this. It's for us, a clean sheet is like a goal, um, so it's very nice. It shows our hard work that we're working very hard to 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 keep the the ball out of the net. Um, so yeah, we're very pleased. You feel again, obviously, the the goals that have come in the last couple of, couple of games as well. Things are just clicked into gear in an attacking sense as well, just with the with the clinical nature of things. Is that is there? Can you put your finger on why that's happened? Why it maybe? Had there been a few games before that you might be struggling to take your chances? Um, like uh, in the last games, you know, we create, we still create a lot of chances. You know, we create a huge amount of chances, um, but we just couldn't take them. And uh, I think it just clicked. You know, it was, uh, you know, it was taking time, but it was about to happen. And uh, you know, once the first goal goes in for the strikers, it's like. A, like a rush, and they will score more and more and more, and uh, hopefully they continue with this uh, this pattern. Do you feel you're hitting the heights that you did at the start of the season with you know ten goals in a week and 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 everything really starting to to click over those two games? Come again? I didn't. Understand. Do you feel you're you're hitting hitting the, the heights in form, that your top form again, as you were showing at the start of the season with a lot of goals, a lot of dominant performances? Uh, yes, I think so. We. We're showing that we're performing good, but I think we were performing uh, in general in a good manner. We're still creating a lot of chances. We're still dominating a lot of games. It's just that we didn't take, uh, you know, the chance. At the end of the day, it's all about goals, and um, yeah, it's just good that uh, the strikers are clicking again, and uh, hopefully they can continue with this with this momentum and going from match to match and score a lot of goals. Hearts had two players sent off the last time you played them at Celtic Park mm-hmm. yesterday. One of their players said the way Celtic play fouls and yellow cards are sort of inevitable, the way that they have to try and combat you. What do you make of that? Do you feel like you do draw a lot of fouls just with the the style that you that you attack? Um, 
I can't I can't say much of that. It's a decision of the player, you know, to go and maybe certain moments with a tackle like that. But um, yeah, it's very difficult to play against us. You know, we have um, very good individual players up front, you know, very creative, quick players. So it's very difficult, um, you know, to defend against these players. Um, so yeah, that's all I can, I can really say to this. To Hi, Maurice. How have you found playing alongside Cameron Carter Vickers when he's had the, the captain's armband? Have you, have you felt anything different by, alongside him? Um, no, it still feels the same. Uh, it still feels um, no, very good. We have a very good relationship together on the field and off the field. Um, you know, he's a fantastic player. Um, he's also showing his leadership qualities. And oh, nothing, nothing has changed with the armband. He's still the same solid CCVS before. <laughs> Obviously, the, the the manager always says, you know, one game at a time. But when the the Champions League is on the horizon, just Tuesday night, how do you find it as players to, you know, just focus solely on on the next game? You know, three competitions in the space of ten days. There's there's a lot going on. Um, obviously, we know the game is on Tuesday, but uh, you know the priority is obviously on the weekend because we play because we need to perform at our highest in the league, and then we need to perform our highest in the cup. Um, so. Like the manager said, obviously, it has to be step by step and uh, tomorrow the first challenge is obviously hard. Uh, sorry, does your attitude change going into the games now with VAR coming into effect at the weekend? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. The, the, the attitude doesn't change. Um, you just still play your game. Um, I think even without the VAR, you're still very careful. Um, you know, in certain moments, you have to be clever and you have to use your brain. You don't have to go into silly, silly situations. Um, so yeah, at the end of the day, um, VAR will make things more clear and uh, will make the game more easier for the referees in moments where they can't see certain things um, that are a bit more, you know, dirty play, for example. Um, so it would be nice. With the amount of games coming up, you know, in the league and Champions League, the manager talks about the rotating squad. Does that encourage the constant need to impress during training? Uh, I think every day you need to impress in training, you need to give 100%. Um, if you want to play for a big football club like this, you have to be at your best. Um, we're competing all to play and we're also pushing each other to play, uh, you know, to improve as players. And uh, no, um, yeah, you need to push yourself and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Hello, Jens. Uh, Hello. Yeah, Jens, you're quite known for coming through the Fulham Academy with Matt. Uh, but before that, you came through the youth team at Tennis Borussia, a team mm -hmm. quite fondly thought of by a lot of Celtic fans. What was it like for you uh, playing there at Tennis Borussia as a young man? Ooh, it was the first time I hear this, someone asking about my childhood club. Um, no, it's nice. Um, it's a nice club, but obviously they, they st struggled financially over the years and they went down the, the leagues, but they're still very good in the academy and... Uh, no, I really enjoyed it because um, we used to travel a lot and play a lot of other, you know, European big teams as a small side and uh, German big teams. So it was nice, you know, competing against these guys and also winning a lot of tournaments. And then at the end of the day, it helped me to, you know, get noticed by other teams across in Europe. And then at the end, it was Fulham. And uh, it also made me, you know, grow as a young, young player you know, to make, take the next step, to take uh, the next step abroad, you know, to be used to traveling a lot, um, seeing different cultures and, uh, yeah, competing with different people. A real solid grounding, yeah. Yeah. Um, are you aware of your nickname among the Celtic supporters? Nickname? Your nickname among the, among the fans. Is it good? Yes, it's good. Mercedes Jens. Oh, I, t I take this then. I... <laughs> I, I <sorry. laughs> I take it. It's a fantastic. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs>